Welcome back to SEO Foundations. In this video, we're going to cover on-page optimization. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the two broad categories of ranking signals. Recite best practices for on-page signals, such as title tags, header tags, URLs, alt text, and others. Identify on-page SEO practices that you should avoid. And finally, describe how natural language processing aims to understand the meaning behind the text. On-page optimization, as the name suggests, is the practice of optimizing web pages to rank higher and get relevant traffic from the search engine. On-page optimization includes both content and HTML source code optimization. Search engine optimization can be very complex. So when you're trying to understand it for the first time, I find it very easy just to break it up into general concepts that you might already have an understanding of. When you look at the hundreds of signals that go into SEO, they can be broken up into either relevancy or, because sometimes it's both, popularity. So relevancy and popularity. Out of all these signals, they fit into one of these two things. We're going to break all the signals we have into these two areas. In this section, we're going to talk about the on-page factors. That's because these are the factors that you have direct impact upon. And you can make a small tweak and have a big impact with organic traffic with your on-page relevancy factors. The primary on-page relevancy factors that I'll cover in this lesson are title tags and meta descriptions, header tags, which are used for headlines and subheadings, website URLs and URL structure, image alt text, internal links, keyword usage, and sitemaps. Let's start with one of my favorites, and that is the title tag. This is also called a page title. The page title is not shown on the page. Now rather, it is displayed on the browser tab. And this is what makes it highly important, is that in addition to being displayed on the browser tab, it is also the title tag or the page title that is shown on the text in the Google search results as the link to the page. The page title influences both the click-through rates and people's first impressions of our website. Next up, we have the meta description. Now, the meta description can be a bit confusing. The meta description is in the code, and it does not influence rankings, but it does influence clicks. People will see your snippet or your page information in the search engine results. That gray text is the meta description. If you don't have a meta description, then it may pull information from the page. You can affect this and improve the chances of your meta description appearing if you write a short descriptive phrase of the content or the purpose of the page. And just because we edit these elements does not guarantee that they will show up. I often say that we affect the change, but we cannot control it. This is because the search engine may override your changes and show different content in these areas. Sometimes it may help and it might be a better description, but many times it's not. Now let's go to the next element, the header tags. These are also referred to as the heading and subheading. And this is how HTML was built when the web was first created enables a logical hierarchy of content. So starting with the headline, then displaying a subheading, and then subheadings after that. The idea here is that you're establishing a hierarchy of information. So you start with the H1. Like a newspaper, there's only one main headline per page. It describes the main purpose of the page. Then a subheading, the H2. This is how you break the subcontent into subcategories. Obviously, you'll want to use a keyword in there as well. You see, by describing the purpose of the page in the headline, and then again in a subheading, you're naturally going to use your primary and secondary keywords because you're going to associate them with the product or the purpose and the benefit. The key is to keep it short. You see, after the headline are 
the subcategories, the H2s, and then your H3 is typically used as a paragraph heading. Now, putting the keyword in these headings alone does not make your page optimized. Remember, the purpose is to provide a quick reference for people to find the content they need within seconds. So short, explanatory heading and subheadings, paragraph headings are very effective. And naturally, you'll be using keywords to help people locate the information that is most important to them. Now, if we go back to the search engine results page, the SERP, there is another element in that listing. The page title is the large blue text. The meta description is the gray text. Now, the green text is the URL of the page that is listed. This is the address of the page. Just like the address for your home, the internet knows that the URL is the address for that page. This is extremely important for SEO for a variety of reasons. The most important, though, is your keyword usage. I like to make sure that I have at least one relevant word in the URL. Now, also, here, keep it short. One of the worst things you can do is have a URL full of keywords, or even worse, hyphenate them all. And remember, people use these URLs. They provide context for the page. People also copy and paste URLs into mobile messages, emails, and social links. So it is extremely important to keep these short, succinct, and I like to say readable. Now, I've just briefly touched about the importance of the URL. And now let's look at the URL structure. First, let's start with the primary core of the URL, the domain name. In the example with the URL I have here, example.com, that's the domain name. So this is the first thing that people see with your online business. Now, beyond the internet, this is going to be what's in all of your ads, emails, brochures, business cards, and online, your social profiles, all of your marketing efforts are going to drive people to this domain. There's a lot of advice about buying or using domains that have your keywords in them. And unfortunately, domains have been being sold for decades, so there's less chance of finding a domain with the keywords you want. Now, the search engines don't make the keyword used in the domain a primary ranking signal, so that's good. However, the domain is your business. It needs to be memorable. If you have a very, I call it a spammy looking domain name with multiple words and hyphens, or one that's hard to spell or confusing, people are going to make an initial impression off of that. So make sure you have something that's going to make a great first impression. Here's the rule for a domain name. Something that's easy to spell and easy to pronounce. Ideally, sure, it's something you can type and share. Something you're going to be able to put on a business card and be proud of. Not something that you bought primarily because you want it for SEO reasons. And you think with that, you're going to succeed. As an example, just think about Amazon. Their domain name says nothing about books, and yet it grew to be one of the largest e-commerce companies in the world. The same with Alibaba or Google. Their domain names were not the keyword, but their marketing and branding built their company. Now, everything after the domain is a subdirectory. This is based on your website organization. As an example, if you have a website selling shoes, then the subdirectory can be called shoes. It's easy, right? The subdirectory is the folder that contains the relevant files or pages for that group. Think of a file folder with documents inside. The file folder is usually based on a major category of content or products. Now inside the folder are individual documents or pages. These files or pages usually come after the subdirectory. In this example, you see the file.html. The next step in optimizing the URL is to name the page in a way that explains the content of the page. To use our e-commerce shoe website, a page name would usually be a specific product name. This way you would end up with domain name, forward slash shoes as the category, forward slash brand name running shoe. Insert that here. If you've ever looked at the HTML that make up the instructions of the page, you'll understand a bit more of how search engines get the information from the page. The text on the page and the markup, such as the headings, provide instructions as to where the text is located, the importance and prominence of the text, in addition to the arrangement of the overall page. HTML is a set of instructions for a browser to assemble the page, and the search engines use that as well. Now, the search engines spiders cannot see images. 
As the internet developed, many attributes were added to provide for accessibility and additional features. Users that are sight impaired cannot see images. And the alternative text tag describes the image. Further, there are many times when our bandwidth isn't strong and not all of the images will load. In that case, we need the alt text description to provide the context of the image and its purpose. Search engines use this alt text description to gain additional context about the page, the content of the image, and its purpose. Now, we have an entire section on links, but at this point, I just want to cover internal links. An internal link is a link from one page on your website to another page of your own website. Now, this is important from a relevancy perspective. You'll see internal links in your main navigation. You'll likely have a link that says home, one that says contact us or about our company. What you're showing to search engines and to humans is that this section, if you click on this link, is about our company or this is where you find our contact information. You see, these links are not votes like external links. However, they provide relevance and context to the information on your own website. Let's dive in a little more on keywords. When a search engine crawls and processes your website, it doesn't simply look for the instances of specific keywords. It's a lot more complex than that. It's using a technology called Natural Language Processing. Natural Language Processing uses algorithms to try to understand the meaning of text. You see, search engine processing is attempting to be human. This is the same way that people see and hear the words, and we're using the words to find the meaning expressed in the words. Similarly, when a search engine goes to your website, it may seek keywords, but it's looking for the context of those words. You may say football, but just having the word football repeated throughout your website isn't going to help you rank specifically for football. What you need to do and what is more common in actual human conversation happens very naturally. When we talk about football, we use naturally additional words such as goal and referee and world cup. You see, Google and the other search engines are going to take these into account. By usage of other synonyms and other common words, you present the context of a bigger, broader idea for your website. The next site signal that we have is sitemaps. Now, there are two kinds of sitemaps. There's the sitemap that is for humans, and there is the sitemap that are for search engine robots, crawlers, or spiders. The one that is for human is called an HTML sitemap. You've probably seen these before. The link is generally in the footer of a website. If you click on it, it shows you the major sections of the website, provides some search functionality, but looking at it as a human, it shows you the hierarchy of the website and where to find important information. It shows how everything fits together. Now there's something else that exists called an XML sitemap. It's not linked from any page of your website, but exists as an independent file on your server. Now, this is something you can see, but it is formatted for search engine spiders. Using a programming language called XML, it shows the hierarchy and the priority of each of the URLs of the website, every page, every document, every image. And it also shows the date that each page was last updated or changed. So at this point, we've covered a lot of things that are important and things that you should be doing when optimizing your on-page content. Now let's go a different direction and cover things that you should not be doing. Keyword stuffing, hidden text, repetitive anchor text, and cloaking. The first one is keyword stuffing. Now, back in the early days of search engine optimization, people used to increase the instances of words on the page. Now, this is well before natural language processing. At that time, search engines were looking for occurrences of specific words. Well, search engines, they're very smart about this. What may have worked 20 years ago or 10 years ago, keyword stuffing does not work. You're not going to rank better for any given phrase by including it a dozen or more times on the page. In fact, you might get an over-optimization penalty by constantly repeating the same word over and over. 
focus on writing content that engages with your visitors and uses language naturally. Now, the next one is hidden text. Unfortunately, I still see this. This is when you write content that is solely for search engines and not for people. Now, typically it is attempted by writing a lot of repetitive keywords as text, coloring it white and placing it against a white background. You see, this was developed as another way to add more keyword stuff text without the user seeing the overuse of keywords. Now, it didn't work too well in the past and it definitely does not work today. This tactic backfires in two ways. First, search engines can tell when it's white text on a white background. It's easy to tell from a computer science point of view. Search engines read the HTML and in the HTML are the instructions for colors. When you hide text, modern search engines are smart enough to figure it out, probably better than a human. Now, secondly, it's done to hide repetitive keyword stuff text, which is the second thing against you. These outdated, unprofessional tactics will most likely get a website penalized by the search engines. The next one is repetitive anchor text. You may have followed a link to a page when looking for a business or information, and instead of the information you want, you get a page that doesn't feel like it was written for people. Every sentence is redundant, repetitive, and almost every keyword is linked even when there doesn't need to be a link. It confuses the flow of the information on the page. Now, again, this used to be a tactic that sometimes would work, but it's no longer helpful. Search engines and their natural language processing algorithms have advanced significantly. They can tell when something's not readable. When something is probably intended for machines and rankings, but not for people, search engines will figure it out. Please don't waste time on redundant links trying to inflate the relevance of your links and pages. The last thing to cover here is cloaking. Cloaking is the idea of showing one thing to the search engines and something entirely different to humans. Now, this is related to the rest of the tactics I just covered. It's something that used to work, but it was expressly against the search engine guidelines. While it may have worked if the search engines discovered it on your website, you could have been penalized or dropped from the search engine results entirely. Now we've covered all of the most important on-page optimization factors. Let's take a look at what the theoretically perfectly optimized page would look like. In this example, we can see many of these elements being used together. You can also see that the base key phrase, digital camera, is being repeated, but always included with a specific context. First at the top of the page is the URL, which has digital cameras in the address. The page title follows using the context of the information and adding the word reviews. You can also see at the top of the page that the main navigation and secondary navigation, also called the breadcrumb navigation, provides context of the page's location within the entire website and natural keyword usage. The H1 headline is the key phrase, but also happens to simply be the best title for the content of the page. The subsequent subheadings provide additional information such as ratings, recommendations, and features. The links provide relevant ways to access additional content. The image utilizes alt text. There are also clear calls to action, which provide relevant offers to visitors. As you can see, the context of all of the content is very strong and sends a clear relevancy signal to both search engines and readers. To conclude this section, I'd like to cover the top influencing factors. Now, sometimes you may find these as lists, but I found it a bit more practical to separate them into categories. Typically every year, you'll find these collections of lists from surveys, experts, or speculation. Some are from testing, but honestly, you can't ever truly test a search engine as they change a little bit with every algorithm. So the best thing is to take from these lists these factors that are the tried and true factors over the years that have worked consistently. Also, those tactics that not only make your website more effective with users, they tend to do well with search engines. So if a tactic serves that dual purpose, it's a good tactic. So these are not exclusive and have to lists for every situation, but guides and indicators for you to use. The top on-page factors from surveys, opinions, and data are these. 
a relevant page title, page headings, anchor text links, a keyword-based URL, a keyword or contextual file name, such as page name, image name, or PDF file name, alt text and images, and finally, what you do with the content on a page to make it more readable, lists, bullet points, and bolded text. The top factors for off-page linking tend to contain these items. The total number of domains linking to you. The number of highly influential domains linking to you. The number of unique domain IP addresses. The total backlinks without nofollow limits. The total relevant anchor text in links to you. And finally, the types and context of keywords in anchor text links. The domain also contributes factors to your overall rankings, such as the age of the domain, which would include ownership information, such as the length of time owned and operated by a company, the real business information tied to that domain, such as the business address being the same as the business registration address for the domain. In addition, the signals from social accounts driving visits to the domain. Functionally, the search engines also utilize some attribution based on the quality of programming of the website. For instance, taking care of the basic search engine protocols of the robots.txt file, XML sitemap, and HTTPS protocol. Websites that implement these features have shown that they are familiar with search engine guidelines and protocol. Now, one of the changes over the past few years has been the implementation of page speed as an increasing ranking factor. Slow loading pages with a lot of extraneous code that slow the delivery of the page will be penalized as they take away from the user experience. Optimizing the page code, speeding up the load time of the page can directly impact your rankings. And this is closely related to the mobile friendliness of your website. If your website is not mobile friendly, it will be limited in visibility as Google's primary index is focused on mobile devices and mobile delivery. Behavioral factors are the newest factors. And with the advent of artificial intelligence, it is making determining the intent and the, is making determining easier for a search engine to derive a judgment of relevancy based on interaction. While the extent of these signals is not fully known, it is suspected that they are minor but growing in importance. These include the amount of users that search for a brand name, business name, and go to that result, showing brand awareness. Also, the amount of direct visits bypassing search. Time on page, pages per session, which is also called the depth of visit. And lastly, the behavior of a searcher from the results page. How many results are clicked? How many times do they return to the results? This evaluation is looking to judge if the results presented were satisfactory or deficient for that query. The two broad categories of ranking signals are popularity and relevance. Of the on-page factors, the page title is the most important individual field. The URL is important and should be memorable. Alt text is important for search engines as well as for sight-impaired humans. Avoid keyword stuffing, hidden text, repetitive anchor text, and cloaking. Natural language processing is a technology that aims to understand the intent that humans have when searching for information. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.